Kalima. <laughs> Kalima. Kalima. My God, this is one of my favorite people on this planet. Mm. You used to go by the name Kali. Now you're Aqua, but maybe we're going to talk a little bit about Kali. What? what Kalima. Kalima. Yeah. Better watch out. <laughs> my God. Yeah. Well, hi everybody. Hey. I'm so happy to be here talking with you. Yeah. Sweet. I think you get you get the Kali in me. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> this is like uh, you know when I look at you, it's like this this anchored vibe where there is the the light and the shadow coming together in one point in, in alignment. As you're going through life, you know you have a beautiful child and traveling the world and in this free lifestyle, um, it's there is an embodiment of something which is very specific. It's mm. like you you carry with you a certain vibrational frequency that uh, that is like you know an embodiment and um i the question for you is like how does kali feel from the inside <sighs> well firstly i want to share that i was born with the name kavita which means poetry in indian and i got to bali and i let go of my old life and kali was the name that i channeled through don't understand why it happened. I just listened to what was being said to me or what the calling was. And so Kali came through and I started to really embody this vibration um, in my life. And what that meant was all my darkness was coming up to be transformed. Mm -hmm. So, darkness. yes, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's like we all want to be these light beings. We are light beings. But we also, in order to know your light, you also have to be able to be totally at one with your dark. Mm. I think it's the play of the light and dark. It's like the night and the day. Yeah. If I said to you it's going to be daytime all the time, when would you sleep? When would you actually get some rest? When would you actually get to transform? So what does darkness feel like? What does it look like? Is it in your thoughts? Is it in your emotions? Is it an energy that touches you? Is it like... For me, darkness is... Um, it's it's more like felt like anger actually it's anger. but it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a beautiful anger because it's an anger that wants to transform it's not an anger that's just there to cause chaos and hurt people or hurt myself or drive myself crazy it's an anger that's just an energy that's saying please wake up see who you really are let go of all that doesn't serve you and it, mm. as a mirror to others also this kali shows you through her own transformation, how you can face your darkness and help that to transform too. Mm. And do you... how does it feel from the inside? You feel enslaved by by the darkness, or you feel like you are watching it, you are aware, you can manipulate the waves or the play. Like I feel empowered, so empowered. empowered. Because the thing is, I think when you're if you're if you're Kali asleep, it's a different thing. But when you're awake, Kali, when mm. you actually embody and own your Kali, what it means is that you understand that you can use your fire to help you to transform. You can burn through all the shit that doesn't serve you yeah. it feels juicy and it feels very live and raw i mean when women are menstruating every month mm -hmm. it's the most fiery time i mean that's what we have pms and we feel all this fire inside our wombs are letting go it's that total moment of transformation uh, you know and actually even Eckhart Tolle said that in, in the time in the moment of your menstruating moment you can actually have a closer chance of touching enlightenment because mm. of really being able to sit present with your darkness. Yeah, because so, there is something raw there. Yes, and it's like you don't go in the stream of the darkness, you become a witness to it. Yeah. You just sit with it. My question to you is like when uh, when we think of light and darkness, very often the idea is like let's focus on the light and let's forget about the darkness, right? Let's push it aside, let's transmute it, let's we're not comfortable with that, we are going to push this push it aside. So what what happens when you push aside darkness like what but is it is it even possible to be like okay that part of creation i don't want to hear about it i don't want to see you just go around with masks yeah. i'm so happy and i'm so enlightened and love is life is all love and light <laughs> and oh my god look at the birds today and you know no i mean look i have a three-year-old child and he is the perfect play of light and dark in his moments where he's just fully innocent, alive and joyful and then his other moments where he's just angry and he's just going to tell you how it is and oh, it's yeah. going to be like a tsunami <laughs> like, no, it's not like this and it's just like, whoa and he actually is the perfect mirror to that mm. of 
he lets he, he lets the energy move of the darkness and and then he can be back into his light and even more free actually yeah, yeah. and he recognizes it like he'll come and say mommy i'm sorry i was like that mm. he's already three and he's already aware of, of of what's going on his plate of light and dark yeah. but for me i i i really appreciate my darkness and mm. I feel it's also fuel for my passion yeah it's, it helps me to go out in the world and actually fight for causes that mean something to me it helps me want to go into a world and help people to wake up and and actually not not sit with this darkness thinking that you know there's something wrong with themselves but actually going well okay this is part of me but how can I use this yeah, to grow I know, right I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens to the man who come close to Kali when your embodiment of of, of <laughs> shadow and darkness and you're into your full anger mode i mean burn baby burn <laughs> you know i mean they, they wake up to what you go like well, oh my god they, they, let's put it all this get way slayed alive uh, no. what, what happens to them i mean i'm not the easiest girlfriend or partner you're to have not? are you kidding <laughs> what do you mean you look you look so so domesticated you know like easy to hang out with you Baby, so, can we go for so little pretty. lunch? I'm going to go to that little Louis Vuitton shop and buy a little bag after. Is yeah. that okay? Would you like to practice tantra? Yeah, sure, but I could get my nails done first, okay? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that Only for half an hour because after that I got so much. Ah! Don't touch my hair when we're making love, okay? Because I don't <laughs> like that shit, you know? It's <laughs> so funny. Um, no, did, did any men survive you? Well, I think they more than survived. I think they became alive after yeah, actually. Yeah. They became no, awakened, I, I, right? I feel like yeah, I feel like um, the unfortunate, fortunate men that um, passed through my life definitely get a good slap around and an awakening in, in the most beautiful way. Um, you know, but I'm not the type of person who wants to go into a partnership or relationship and put, put on masks, yeah. plain authentic. I know. I'm there because I want to be transformed and I want you to be transformed. It's mm -hmm. not that I want it, it's going to happen. Yeah. Because I want truth, authenticity, I want to melt into you. And in order for us to melt into each other, we have to let go of all the masks, we have to let go of all the bullshit, and we have to be real and raw. Yeah. Real and raw. And I'm very, I'm very conscious of really seeing this mirror. You know, really looking at this mirror and and really seeing not it's not about what's wrong with you or what you need to change. It's actually I want to look at myself mm -hmm. and through you, through my partner, through my love, I want to see where I am not being loved, where mm -hmm. I am not being accepting, where I am judging, where I am maybe not being so authentic or real. And and that's what it's about for me. It's 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 seeing what comes up for me, and also in return giving positive, clear feedback to the person that you love you mm. know i mean when it comes to sexually i mean when you're on that path to tantra as you know it's not a question of um wanting to practice tantric sex it's 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 not like that it's not that shift it's a way of being mm. it's a way of being fully present with another and if that person's not fully present it's not vibrating you yeah. cannot vibrate so it's not wanting to practice something, it, it just is that yeah. way. So if you really love someone, you help them, you help them to learn, You they're willing to open up to learning that. But yeah, I think they've survived. I think I survived. Yeah, they survived. Few, few they, come to, they come to me for coaching after, you know. <laughs> oh. No, you're amazing. It's like, uh, you know, your vibe is very unique. I've seen you go around the world, you know, conquer new territories and it's, uh, it's beautiful. I hope uh, that the next journeys in your life come and take you to new places of beauty, joy, harmony, and celebration. Thank There's you. lots of good things coming your way. Thank you. Stay in touch with this woman. She will change your life wherever you are. Sacred Orgasmic Dance, next video. I'll tell you all about it. Oh my God. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> Jaya, we love you. Kalima. <laughs>